Hello, LPs community. I'm honored to be here. My name is Beatriz Garcia. I'm a guest lecturer and researcher at the Faculty of Law uh, of the University of Lisbon. And I want to thank Professor Vasco Pereira da Silva for letting me uh, join this, these always very interesting discussions here on the LPs Network. So following the request uh, by Professor Vasco Pereira da Silva for us to talk about AI, I thought it would be adequate to bring the, this image. I'm uh, from uh, right now, I'm talking from outer space because AI has been a really disruptive technology and bringing uh, many challenges and also making worlds closer, uh, closer than ever and very futuristic. So today I'm going to be talking about one of my topics of research, which is the public liability when the public administration uses artificial intelligence in the decision making process and causes damages to particular citizens. What is the liability re uh, regime? So my uh, plan of exposition is first the importance of AI in the public sector. AI as a technological risk, the role of the European Union legislation in the regulation of artificial intelligence, and finally, challenges and answers towards a liability regime that enables, um, of course, uh, citizens to be, to receive uh, uh, from the administration their, um, their compensations. So we can uh, all agree that artificial intelligence is one of the most important technologies created by mankind in recent years. Through algorithms which allow the mass production of decisions, public administrations across the world have been benefiting from its advantages, namely efficiency, reduction of costs and speed of procedures. Its use in the public sector is more expressive both here in Portugal and worldwide in areas as health and mobility. The introduction of this technology in administrative decision making has brought up a real revolution in the administrative way of acting, especially regarding the practice of administrative acts. This new reality requires, indeed, a response from the legal system to the new challenges posed. When the AI decides, we are witnessing the practice of a true administrative act that is the result of the application to a determined case of the rules of the algorithm, which is an administrative regulation. This act, however, is dematerialized being this characteristic, the one that separates it from the traditional way of uh, the, administra uh, the administrative function. One of the many challenges of the AI in the law field is, of course, the universe of civil liability of the state and other public entities. Why? Considering the increased risk that the use of technology that simulates human intelligence brings, damages can obviously be caused because of uh, obviously the use, the unpredictability of the system and how it escapes the human control, at least at some level. So in the next few minutes, uh, and we'll be sharing some ideas and conclusions I have been reaching out in my investigation on this is obviously the non-contractual liability of the state when it comes to the use of artificial intelligence. When analyzing this universe, I'm going to be focusing on acts and decisions of the robots. In other words, the way that the nature of the device, the unpredictability, the so-called emerging behavior, uh, the way it is naturally intrinsically made to, to act can cause the damages. I'm not going to be talking about the facts of the hardware uh, and, and none of that, just uh, um, 
In other words, not I'm not going to be focusing a flaw in the design of the product or system, but rather on the practical impacts of the correlations or patterns that the system identifies in a large set of data, because we are talking about the mass production of decisions. The, uh, the need for data is uh, basic for AI to be able to perform. So for all these reasons, I will be focusing on the normal behavior of the software. So, I have found many challenges uh, in my research on this uh, on this topic of the civil liability for the use of AI when it comes to the state and other public entities, being one of them the causal link, the attribution of the the concept of guilt, right? The, the, the subjective uh, approach, the subjective element of the responsibility. And just these two, at least, to start. And so I'm going to try to answer this question, which is, who is liable when AI fails to perform in the public administration? Once again, the emergent behavior of the system brings up an enormous dose of unpredictability, questioning us, you know, making us, making us uh, academics and researchers think about what it is or what should be the role of the human hand and brain on the decision-making process uh, when AI is involved. Our first statement, my first statement, I think it would be uh, this one, the following one. The legal personality of AI must be rejected. Uh, it is always the human behind the machine that must be held liable if uh, conditions, uh, all the conditions are verified, of course. Um, first and foremost, because attributing legal personality to these entities would mean recognizing they, they are almost as a person for the law, which is ab initio. <laughs> degrading degrading to to us human beings with capacity to think and make our uh, judgments right it's not possible to hold a thing uh, responsible so um, it's obvious that the ai system does not have the capacity for free decision making and autonomy with moral uh, responsibility so it can't distinguish right from wrong, fair or unfair, moral and immoral, just like a human can. So these are always aspects we must consider. Secondly, because there is already a predetermination of the robot's actions through the algorithm. So it's not possible to speak of a true free will or free uh, totally independent autonomous behavior. There's always a, pre a prerequisite, which is an algorithm has been created and formatted in order for the AI to perform as it should. Even though the system can assume a remarkable degree of autonomy, it always acts in an automated way, making it impossible for us to speak of a true behavior. Having said that, we can only agree that it is the public administration and its organs and its uh, its people that should be held responsible when AI causes damages to citizens. But then the second question arises, should we adopt a, un a unified, a single solution for all the universe of AI? We believe not, I believe not, due to the many degrees and the many levels of intensity of artificial intelligence. We, uh, some authors speak of a soft, um, um, super, they speak of super intelligence, high risk, low risk, and also the European uh, legislator uses this this distinct this these distinctions so due to this 
these many realities within the 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 um, artificial intelligence that exist and will, of course, uh, continue to exist and become even more complex. We believe that there are many types of risks involved or levels of risk that must be considered. So a unitary tra treatment of this question may not be adequate. Because depending on the type of risk that each system presents, the legal behavior required from the public administration will have to change and be configured in line with that level of risk, which is low, medium, or high. And it can also be unknown if we are talking about a disruptive new technology. Um, if the risk is unknown, this means that the administration could not know and couldn't have the means to know uh, about the existence of the risk and therefore it should not respond. And this is what uh, it's called the risk of civilization. So we we if we want to uh, grow and expand and evolve as a whole planet, we have to accept that some things are going to, to happen, some risks will have to take place. If the risk is known and intolerable, because it's very high and it can collide with fundamental rights, and still the administration uses the system uh, in, the, in the event of a damage, we think that we can be talking about a violation of the principle of principles of proportionality, justice, and reasonableness, as well as prevention and precaution, which are all European and globally accepted principles for the public administration. Intolerability means that there's no respect for proportionality when balancing on a particular situation the benefits of the AI and the possible damage is caused. When the possibility of damage of fundamental rights exists and is, it's high, the use of AI must not be accepted, so the administration must refuse it. And if it still chooses to use the correct, the, a concrete system um, such as the, this, this type of system I just talked about, it should be held responsible and in a subjective uh, uh, solution. So our biggest challenge is to think about systems which have a known and tolerable level of risk. And we believe, I believe this is probably the biggest, uh, the, the biggest universe. M most of the cases will, collide, uh, will follow precisely this. So, a known and tolerable risk. In these cases, I believe the application of the liability regime for unlawful acts seems an, op an appropriate solution. So, we must, I think, we, we can in a way, reject an objective solution close to a responsibility for the risk. Why? Because knowing that AI is a technology that involves risks, the public administration must actively prevent damages that may result from it. This means public entities may comply, have to comply with technical standards and objective duties of care. Otherwise, an illegal and guilty conduct is verified. That's uh, the way I uh, have been uh, thinking uh, about this, this uh, subject. So we are talking about a liability for omission of a certain behavior, which is the duty of care or vigilance, um, which is in line with the idea of the human in the loop, which is a, co a concept that has, has also been very debated in the, the doctrine, which is the idea that a human person must always be in the process, in the decision-making process. It, it should not be, the decision should not be just left to the machine and the possibility of human interfering in the process, correcting if needed some, some aspects is also, is present and it implies the responsibility of that subject. 
So, but we can't discuss this topic, of course, without making a reference to the European Union uh, regulation that has been very abundant on this topic. I will not be in this 20 minutes uh, challenge. I will not be covering, of course, all of the regulations, but I will be just mentioning a few of them that seem to me important and maybe determinant to the European Union positioning on this matter. Um, the, one of the first um, instruments was adopted in 2017, when the European Parliament adopted a resolution with recommendations to the European Commission on Civil Law and Robotics. Although it is applicable on the civil law field, it has some conclusions of great interest, namely, the one uh, highlighting that any legal solution applied to the liability of robots and AI should not, under any circumstances, limit the type or extent of damage to be compensated, which is an interesting solution. And also, uh, in, um, in 2018, in the, in the year next, in the year following, uh, the last one, the European Commission created the expert group on liability and new technologies, uh, which has done a has, has been doing a relevant job on these on these topics. And one of the documents presented was liability for artificial intelligence and other emerging digital technologies, in which um, it is pointed out the need to create an European regime which is also interesting um, in order to prevent many divided regulations and separated regulations. When it comes to AI liability, and also a little bit uh, on, on the public, applicable to the public sector, the most recent development is the, the, the proposal for a directive of the European Parliament and the Council, on adapting non-contractual civil liability rules to artificial intelligence. The AI Liability Directive of September, um, 28 September, 2022. The European Union stands for different rules for different risk levels, which to us, as we, we said, it's more than reasonable. In fact, um, the universe of AI is vast and we believe this solution is adequate. Nevertheless, the European legislator defends the need for the duty of care, understood as a mandatory standard of conduct, of conduct established by national or union law in order to avoid harm or to legal interests recognized at national or human or union level including life, limb, property, and the protection of fundamental rights. This is Article 2. The most interesting part of this proposal is the establishment of a presumption of causality. And as we talked in the beginning, one of the problems is the causal link. So in a, in a system that has very opacity and you know, the black box effect that is very mentioned, it is very hard to, uh, it can be very hard in, the, in practice to verify which concrete behavior of the human behind the machine led to the, the malfunctioning of the system. So the European legislator proposes this the establishment of this presumption in certain cases to overcome difficulties of proof. This presumption is applicable in very specific conditions, which are referred to in Article 4, uh, namely subparagraphs A, B, and C of paragraph 1, uh, and, all, and always very uh, applicable when the applicant has demonstrated or the court has presumed the existence of fault on the part of the defendant or of a person for whose behavior the defendant is responsible. Also, Quan, also when it feels reasonable likely that the culpable act influenced the result 
And finally, one when the claimant has demonstrated that the result produced by the system or the, or the inability of the A system to produce a result gave rise to the damage. So these are three cumulative, cumulative um, requ requisites that can be hard to, to verify, but only the practice will, will reveal. So since the causal link is an extremely difficult requirement to prove, to prove when, when using AI, we believe this is an adequate and proportional solution. And uh, we believe that this subjective responsibility, saying that, yes, the public authority must uh, be held liable when it does not comply with this duty of care, a verifying software uh, improvements or when uh, some uh, duties of technical order are not uh, verified, of course, the, there has to be a liability um, uh, the application of this regime. So we will be waiting for further developments. I believe we will have a directive very soon. I'm uh, looking forward to see uh, how this evolves, if this proposal finally ends up in a, a effective directive applicable to all member states. And from now, for now, that is all I have to share. I hope I have been, I hope I have led you to some thoughts and uh, maybe conclusions on this topic. And thank you for your attention and see you soon.